In this video, we are going to talk about programming simple QTEs in Construct2. It's interesting for us to take a look at QuickTime events because they are a very simple form of combo system. They will give us an opportunity to better understand how to code more complex combo systems in the future and how to tweak our gameplay's timing. I am not going to show you how to add each action step by step in Construct2. Instead, we are going to do it like the pros. In my opinion, unless you are an absolute beginner, following step-by-step -step tutorials tend to be unproductive. Programming is a bit like writing. Just like you can express the same idea with all sorts of different sentences, there is no one single method to code a system. Instead, there are many valid ways to approach each mechanic or problem. Learning the process step by step is a bit like learning the words that compose a sentence by heart, missing its meaning altogether. In order to become a good C2 developer, you have to learn to dissect even cheats and extract the high-level idea on which the code is based. You only want to take the essence away from a tutorial that presents a way to program a certain mechanic. That is to say, you only want to get a general sense of how it all works and make it yours. I decided to approach this system like a game prototype. That is to say, the Capex files provided with this tutorial reflect my approach to prototyping and coding a game system. It works as such. First, I prototype the game freely to see whether or not the initial idea works. The initial prototypes can actually be trashed. They just help us to know which ideas to keep and which ones to discard. Once the core gameplay works, it is time to develop a simple, sane base to build upon. At that point, I am just trying to make my code flexible enough so that I still have a bit of room to experiment as I go. It is almost impossible to plan in advance everything that we will be adding to the code, so it is a good practice to decouple objects and systems from one another as much as possible. That is what object-oriented programming concepts permit us to achieve. You can take each C2 file like an individual code reading exercise. The content of each capex is commented, so you shouldn't have too much trouble understanding those even sheets. Today, I'm leaving you with three versions of a capex file that establish the base of a simple game inspired by us. Let us take a look at those. The first version is very basic. It just focuses on one static button. It is one of the most basic QTE implementations you can have. We launch a timer. If the player clicks on the button while the timer is running, he wins, else he loses. Because yes, QTEs are that simple at their heart. The second version is slightly more complex and organized than the first one. This time, the button pops at a random position on the screen. The score is being calculated and the QTEs are chained indefinitely. From the third version onwards, you will need to install the light twin behavior made by LearnArray, which you can find in the description below. If you have never installed behaviors before, the manual explains how to do so. This version introduces an animated circle that indicates the timing at which the player is supposed to hit the button. The score calculation has been modified so that the player gets more points if he hits closer to the end of the timer. Note that the gameplay even group stayed untouched in that case. That is it for this time. As far as programming tutorials are concerned, I prefer to spend time preparing systems for you, because that is when you are dissecting them yourselves that you will learn. The idea is, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day, teach a man to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. I think there is no point showing you the exact events you need to create a system step by step because, for one, if you can't reproduce it after reading the original code, it means that it is too advanced for you and you need to work with simpler examples for now, or that you didn't take enough time to understand the code. Then, if you have to follow the steps to code a simple system like that, you probably won't be able to adapt it to your game and to play with it, which is the goal of programming tutorials. Ultimately, all that matters is that you become a bit more independent as a game designer or a developer. Anyway, please tell me if you like that approach in the comments. If so, I'll prepare badass commented code examples for future tutorials and live streams. In the last video about QuickTimer events, I tried to talk a bit about this mechanic from a game designer's perspective. I must admit that I missed the point I wanted to focus on. 
The idea was to show that rhythm games like Guitar Hero or an RPG like Paper Mario reinterpret QTEs to their advantage. And as designers, we can look at the characteristics of a mechanic like that one, try to analyze it and just extract the parts of the concept that are interesting to us. If you liked the video, you can become a subscriber to be notified whenever I release a new piece of content or uh, when I start streaming. And thank you for watching.